Well, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? We are heading out on yet another um, wonderful case at O Dark 30 here in Colorado. Um, this is kind of a rush situation, but it's something that, well, we, we've got to do. The client is needing us to go out on this case. It is another injured worker case. Um, we do a lot of those, as you know, and uh, we're heading uh, to another small town, um, a different subject than my last videos, but um, we're heading to another small town out here in Colorado to take care of this one. And this has a unique twist to it, so you will want to know a little bit more about the case. And as soon as I get on scene and set up, I will let you know. Okay, folks, we are on scene on this one. And this is a really unique case, as I had uh, said when we first headed out. Um, this is an injured worker case. But on this particular one, it is what we refer to as an insurance due diligence case. And what that means is this insurance company, and I get a lot of insurance companies that hire us for things like this, um, they are close to a trial date on this case. And they were looking at the potential for doing a settlement prior to that trial. Um, and they've had surveillance in the past and there has been some minor video obtained of the subject on that surveillance. They don't have anything that indicates for sure that this person is doing anything wrong or frauding. But what they want to do is they want to have one more shot at it. They want to have a pair of eyeballs on it one last time and they want to see if there's anything that's really outstanding about the subject's activities. In this particular case, he has some um, very limited weightlifting abilities. He can only lift a little bit at a time. And we've never gotten anything on him in the past that showed anything different. We got some video of him doing some minor lawn care stuff, watering the lawn, uh, mowing his lawn, things like that, but nothing strenuous. So uh, this is really a due diligence one. And because it's so close to trial, the last thing that they want is for us to get made or get burned or make the um, claimant suspicious about anything like that. So it's what we call a no burn case. And I will usually go out on the due diligence and the no burn cases myself because I want to make sure that there is an extraordinarily large amount of caution used. So like in this particular one, I am several blocks away from the residences down the street. And if I see any kind of potential activity, what I can do is I can walk around to my left or to my right and I can circle back around and I can check out that activity from a distance and obtain video with a covert camera from those locations. This one where the subject residence is, there is also a major roadway that goes about a block and a half away from where his residence is located. And that is at an elevated location when it goes past. So I could go up there if need be, and I can drive by and I can check out what activity is going on. Or if I absolutely had to, I could pull over up there and I could grab a little bit of video and probably be completely undetected. I drive through this area all the time and I always see cars pulled over around this area. It just happens, especially during rush um, or during the week when lots of people are going to and from work. We're, so we're going to use a huge amount of caution on this one and we're going to do our best to get what we can and we're going to stay hunkered down and make sure that we are not made. Now where I'm located at, I don't necessarily have to black out because I have um, a lot of apartments here that I can sit next to so I'm not going to stand out too much. But there is a school right over here. Um, there is a, a local high school. This is a smaller town, so there's the high school, the middle school, and the elementary school. So that makes me a little bit nervous um, just because, like right now, I see kids walking to school and stuff. They're all going to be walking past me, and I could really stand out. So I have called myself into the sheriff's department. I have contacted the local police department, and I have let them know of the situation. In fact, I have some high school kids walking right in front of my car right now, and they obviously saw me sitting here talking to myself but then everybody's sitting and talking to themselves or talking on their phones. Well, folks, um, let me get this down here a little bit. It is um, 
well, it's it got got a little cold out there. I will tell you that. Um, we have seen a little bit of activity at the residence, and like I had said before. Um, if I see activity, I can go over here to my left or I can go over here to my right. And I can go down a few blocks and I can walk around and I can come back and I can check the activity. The activity was not my subject. It was activity on the property. It was his wife getting ready to go to work. But I'll tell you what, it is chilly out there. And this one kind of caught me by surprise. I didn't pay a lot of attention to the weather. Now, I always have a hoodie or a jacket and multiple shirts, things like that um in my vehicle just in case but i didn't wear a i didn't bring a heavy coat of any kind with me today and uh the cold out there really took me a little bit by surprise um it's cloudy today um low 30 is supposed to have a chance for rain snow mix a little later on and there's a slight breeze and i tell you what all of that mixed at this high altitude can turn into a very chilly and a very cold walk if you have to go out there and go walking. But luckily, like I said, at least I have this hoodie. I do have another jacket if I needed to put on back there. And then I have my bucket of goodies um, that has uh, different things, other shirts, um, even socks, shoes, other ball caps. Um, this is my preferred ball cap, of course. I like to wear this one. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, things that I have in there as well, including, you know, my magnetic signs. Um, if I need to put up a quick guys on my vehicle, like a road survey and, and my orange cones and orange light and all kinds of stuff there. But a big lesson here, make sure you check that weather report. I got in off of a case late yesterday and uh, it was, it was a beautiful day. And out here on the Eastern Plains in Colorado, if you're out working and it's 40, 45 degrees and it's sunshine, it's a beautiful day. I mean, it's warm, especially sitting in a vehicle. So I hadn't given it a whole lot of thought. I knew it was supposed to turn a little bit colder, but I hadn't really paid attention. I got that case in late last night. It was a rush case. They wanted me out this morning. So I'm like, absolutely, I'll be out bright and early or dark and early as the case may be, um, like it was today. So I got out here right away and uh, I didn't even think about grabbing everything i mean i've got my i've got my camera i've got my my trusty spy cam my lawmate spy cam with me um, that i take with me when i go on walks like that or when i just do drive-bys i'll use it to just shoot video as i'm going around i've got my cover sheet i've got my my water bottles i've got my other bottles i've got my snacks i've got everything that i need for the case but i didn't bring a heavier coat and out there it is cool and it's a little misty right now so um, that makes it even cooler so anyway um i will let you know if i see any other activity okay well folks we did have a little of um i'll call it odd activity down there um, at the residence i was just sitting watching and then i noticed a lady um that looked similar to his wife and she had got back home by the way but she parks around the corner a little bit over by the garage where i can't see and uh, shortly after she got home, it looked like her walking around with a little tablet and a pen. And she was looking up and down the streets and she stopped at a couple of nearby vehicles. And it appeared to me like she was writing down the descriptions, license plates of the vehicle, things like that, which just seemed a little odd to me. Now, I was over three blocks away. I don't think I was in any kind of a jeopardy, but she walked around to the right of where the residence is like i was saying if i had gone to the left or right i could walk down a couple blocks and then come around and i had done that one time when i had saw activity i didn't walk up to the residence i just got within um, a little bit closer proximity about two blocks where i could see what was going on and i just turned around and went the other way um, nobody would have seen me from there so i don't think i brought up any suspicion but i knew if she walked around that same route that i might have taken she would have ended up coming right back past me and I thought that might have been a little awkward, even though I don't think she could have seen me inside the vehicle. Um, I didn't want to take that chance or take the chance that she's just walking around looking for vehicles that she doesn't normally see. And I've seen this happen in cases in the past where there's a suspicious um, subject where they, they themselves will come out and be recording all of the vehicles around them. Or they'll have a spouse or even a child come out and do that. So I decided to err on caution and I exited the neighborhood and I went back over to where I could drive back past even further a couple of blocks 
And sure enough, when I got to that street that I could look down where she would have been coming up if she was going to come around back behind where I was, she was coming up that street. So I'm very glad that I moved. Now, there was a lot of cars on that street. I don't think she would have noticed me from that distance thinking that's a car that that she would be worried about. And I was parked by a lot of apartments and there's going to always be new cars there every day, people visiting and stuff like that. But given the nature of this case being a due diligence and a no burn scenario, um, I decided to err on caution. I did leave. Now I am out on the major arterial. The exit to the neighborhood, the primary exit is several blocks, um, probably about four blocks down in front of me. So I will be able to see if he exits and I will be able to get a follow on him if he does that from a distance. And I would be following in a case like this from a great distance, no matter what, just given the situation. But I wanted to make sure that I was erring on caution. And the vehicle that I saw for this individual that's parked outside and the, the vehicle that I believe he will be driving if he did leave is a unique colored vehicle. So I would see it at a distance and it's always nice when you have something like that, a vehicle like that that you have to follow that you can spot, um, you know, at a distance and in a crowd of vehicles. So I'm not too worried about missing him. And again, this is more of a due diligence type of a situation. This individual, I have here a whole list of vehicles. He has five vehicles registered in his and his wife's name, um, plus multiple trailers and boats and different things like that that I have to watch every time a vehicle goes by. I have to decide, does it fit one of these vehicles and see if, if it might have been my subject. And I just have my dash cam running all the time right now. So it will grab the license plate and it will grab video of every vehicle that drives past me as well in case he does go past. If he decides to come this way for some reason, it would grab it and I would let him get plenty out of sight before I ever started my engine and thought about flipping a U because I also want to watch and make sure that his wife isn't following him or somebody else to make sure, you know, that somebody isn't following. Again, given the situation, we just want to be extremely cautious on that. Okay, folks, well, we did have a little activity with our subject. Um, he did leave with his wife. Um, they just went a short distance over to a little diner over here and had lunch. And right now I am following them at a, uh, at, at a distance, at <laughs> a considerable distance, probably about five, six blocks behind them. Um, it looks like they're probably heading back towards the residence here. So we're just follow, gonna follow them there. I got a little bit of video, it was good. Um, there was nothing like damning in it. I, it was him getting in and out of his vehicle and, uh, or getting out of his vehicle, going into the restaurant. Coming out of the restaurant, getting into his vehicle, I was able to sit several blocks down and watch the vehicle. Um, they did not look ultra suspicious or anything like that, um, but we did get that video and now they are turning on the street that they live on. We gotta watch a lot of traffic around here. So I'm gonna go past the street here And uh, it does look like they are heading towards the residence. So uh, that was successful. That was exciting. Um, a little bit of a thriller for me. As I said, I was sitting on the arterial road watching and I saw them leave. And thankfully, they went the way I thought they would. They went the opposite way of me, which was good. However, I was like four or five blocks behind them at that time. So I had to catch up without looking like I was catching up to them. So now I've got to get set up down here again and find a good place where I can watch and see if anything else happens. Okay, folks. Well, I didn't see any more activity on this one. Um, it is essentially a wrap. You know, we, we, we got the job done. We got our eyes on the subject. Um, we didn't see anything dramatic, but now they can move forward with negotiations on settlement. And a lot of these cases, what happens, they have a trial date and they, they're just doing a due diligence again. They wanted one more time to go out and make sure that this guy probably is not frauding the system. And I, you know, I'm not judge or jury. I can't make those decisions, but based on what I have seen, I would say he is not frauding the system. 
that he is uh, indeed injured and so now they can go in good faith into negotiations and discuss the possibilities of settling this case. And a lot of times what happens on these cases, they're set for trial, like this one is, is uh, set over for a trial. They're coming up really soon. And when they go into that trial, one of the first things that they're going to be asked to do is to sit down and talk about it again and discuss negotiating a settlement on it. And chances are in this case they're going to they're going to do that. Um, how they're going to settle, what they're going to settle for, I have no idea on the amounts or anything like that. People are always asking for a certain number and a lot of times what you ask for and what you get are two different things of course. But uh, it, it's probably going to settle and the client is happy and I'm sure they will send us more work as well. Hey folks, here's a little bonus uh, information for those of you that made it to the end of the video and I always try to add that as I'm heading back to the office. When it comes to cases like this, the due diligence, no burn type of cases, I know people are going to wonder, well, how many of these types of cases do you get? And I'll tell you what, I don't get a lot. Three, maybe four a year um, tops. I think I have maybe in the past had a year where I have five or, five or six, but generally it's going to be three or four a year with regular clients like the one that I'm working for or I was working this case today for. And here's a key factor on this. It was a rush case and this client knows my rush fees. My rush fees are one and a half times my regular fees. And they're also non-refundable retainers on rushes. And with cases like this, I get paid my full day. Even if I was to have followed the individual and lost the individual. And the reasoning behind that is because if I didn't have the restrictions of make sure you don't get burned, don't get too tight, don't work it too hard, um, you know, then I would probably end up getting full eight hours in. Now in this particular instance, I did get my full day in. But I've had some. <laughs> I have gone out and I've worked a couple of hours, see the subject, they leave, I start following them very loosely and I end up losing them. And it's because of that no burn clause that the, the client wants. They want to make sure that, that they're not jeopardized because the individual knows a PI is following them. And that's not my fault. So I make sure that they understand that um, it's, it's non-refundable and I get paid for my full eight hours. Of course, I'm going to do my due diligence to do everything I can. Like in this particular instance, we did see activity. He did leave with his wife. They went to a diner and then they went back home. Um, I didn't get a ton of stuff. Luckily, it was close. It's hard to follow somebody from three, four, five blocks behind. And if you if they get on the highway and you're following them at that distance, it's going to be very hard for you to catch back up to them without being noticed. So a lot of times then you would just go back to the residence and wait and hope that they come back. But I would still put in my full eight hours. You know, if I went out and worked 30 minutes and then the guy left and I lost him in traffic five minutes later, I'm going to do an area search for him where I think he may have been going. And then I'm going to head back to the residence and then I'm going to wait for him and see if he shows back up and see if I get any more video at that particular time. So that's a little bonus information for you on that. And you're probably not going to just get a phone call out of the clear blue from an attorney at a at an insurance company asking you to do one of these cases. It's going to come from somebody that has done some work with you in the past or has had some high recommendations for you through the industry. And I think every one of these types of cases I've worked directly with the legal counsel for the insurance company. I'm not working with, with a claims representative. I'm not working with an adjuster. I'm not working with the SIU. I am working with the legal counsel for the insurance company in these cases. The one that's going to be going in and working on the negotiation for the settlement or going to be litigating it and they want to know firsthand. So that's it. Hey, stay safe out there.